it's Molly here from Discover the Big Island Real Estate. I'm here with Solar Steve from Photon Works. And today is a very, very exciting interview, guys. We're going to be talking about all things solar. He's the man to install <laughs> all photovoltaic systems here in the island. He not only works on this island, but he also works yeah. statewide. That's right. That's right. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, we have a couple of questions for Steve, especially for those who are planning on uh, moving to the Big Island and installing photovoltaic systems. Um, you know, this is a question that I do get uh, very frequently on the group. If you're not part of the group, join. Uh, <laughs> I'm moving to the Big Island of Hawaii. We're on Facebook. And if you haven't already, uh, make sure to subscribe to this uh, channel. So we're going to dive deep into the questions and uh, we're going to be talking about how the photovoltaic system work on a home. Steve, take it away. All right. All right. Um, so uh, photovoltaics is uh, electricity that's, uh, that comes from light, from the sunlight. Um, so what the systems we put on, you put solar panels on your roof, they're going to convert the sunlight into usable electricity that can be used in your home using mm. a solar inverter. Mm. Um, and basically it's going to serve your needs at the house and spin that electricity meter backwards. And in your case, you got a, added a battery system, so yes. you're actually storing your solar energy for you to use your own energy in the house and really interact with the utility grid as little as possible. Wow. And guys, he, they did such an amazing work. Um, you know, they've been working on their photovoltaic project, not only, I mean, not only for the installation, but also the planning. Um, you know, I know that there's a lot of you out there that are pr planning on doing this DIY, but once you hire a professional, you kind of see why you need the help <laughs> because they're able to really um, measure how much do you need the uh, the better placement. That's something that we're going to be talking about next. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, it really it's amazing to have somebody um, to help you and guide you on this process. So, what are the benefits of having a PV system here in Hawaii? Mm. Uh, the the biggest benefit, I think, uh, universally, is just saving money on electricity. Right. Um, obviously. Here uh, on, on the Big Island for residential, you're paying 38 cents per kilowatt hour. Um, I know on Oahu, we're paying about 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm, that's so that's, that's the highest in the, in the country. And, uh, and so when you're using your own energy, uh, solar electricity, it actually ends up being cheaper uh, than using utility. Especially, right. obviously you have a payback period, uh, but it's uh, that system's good for 20 years, so that's that's your benefit. Of course, uh, the environmental benefit and climate change and reducing our dependence on, on uh, fossil fuels and coal uh, is, is also a great benefit to save money while doing, right? Right. And you know what? Another cool thing as, um, you know, as being shown the, the app, mm -hmm. you're able to see that's right. Like yeah. your usage and how much you're helping the planet. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's 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 pretty incredible. How expensive it is to uh, run electricity here in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> like I said, on the, it's uh, 38 cents per kilowatt hour. It's obviously the, all of our energy sources are shipped in here. And so mm -hmm. we pay for it. Um, and so also a lot of our stuff for a lot of people is electricity for heating your water, um, cooking, dryer, you know, some, some places have gas, but if that's all electricity, that's all going to come through on your utility bill. Um, and uh, so it, it all adds up. And, right. You know. What is like the typical household? So say, for example, you have a three bedroom home that operates, um, you know, AC, on a regular, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, for us, our bills were close to five hundred dollars a mm -hmm. month on usage. Yeah. Um, like, like, what are the what are the savings that people can expect from installing a unit? Um, so, you know, ideally, we're going to size the system to match that electricity needs, so mm -hmm. that you end up paying zero to utility, mm -hmm. and you just uh, paying for your your solar system, right. and that's it. Um, obviously, we're limited by roof space, you know. So hopefully, we have enough roof space to cover that. We have we can put enough solar panels to right. uh, cover your needs. If not, we're just gonna you know do as much as we can. Right. Um, so 
depending, you can save as much as you, you know, up, up to your electricity bill. You, mm -hmm. you never want to add more than that because you're not going to get a full credit when you send it back to the utility. Mm -hmm. So you kind of want to match it perfectly to your oh, needs. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so for instance, your system, your bill is about four to $500. Yeah, around. So um, your, your syst the system we built is uh, oh, like 9.6 kilowatts. Um, and then here in Hawaii, that should cover, just about cover your four to $500 mm -hmm. electric bill. So you don't wanna go over on adding more panels if you don't need to? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't make sense because the energy you send back to the utility, you don't get paid for it. You know, you just get credit. So you just paid for the panel, for the- Yeah, so you, there's no payback on that extra um, added system. Right. What is the, what would you consider it to be a return on investment on, on your, on, on the panels that you get? Like what's your it, ROI there um, on average? Yeah, so uh, the, the, the system is, is warrantied, the, the components are warrantied for 20 years. Um, and so if you take 20 years worth of electricity compared to the price you pay for your system, it actually will pay off in about six years. Mm. So uh, as far as like, a, a, uh, hard to give you a percentage, but basically you pay that four or $500 that you're normally paying anyway for electricity, put it towards your solar system. After year six, that payment goes away. And then for the next 14 years of the warrantied lifetime of the system, you're not paying for electricity mm. anymore. So uh, that that's that's the benefit, and that's the the best so way to describe. Yeah, right. six-year payback is kind of the best way to describe it. Are, are there any are there situations to where a solar panel systems don't apply to a homeowner? Um, like it wouldn't be a good situation. Yeah. Um, in Hawaii, I'd say no because it's it's good in every case because electricity is so expensive, and because we have such great weather here. So, I mean, it's, it's honestly the ideal place to, to have to solar it. here. Yeah. Right. Um, I think that um, with the rise on electricity charges, I was reading an article yeah. To, yeah. to where the electricity charges are going to go like through the roof yeah. very so, soon. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like I said, we, we're using fossil fuels still out here and uh, the, the price of, of uh, oil, gas, it's all going up. That's how the utility produces electricity. So when that goes up, our costs go up. Right. So just. So if you, if you got a photovoltaic system, you're like good to go. Your price is you're not set. The, your, your price is set. So you're basically just setting your. Mm -hmm. um, your, your electricity your cost. Your electricity cost. For the, you know, the lifetime of the system. Right. So that's not, that's not ever going to increase. You know? Right. Um, that's, that system's going to produce your electricity for, you know. Kind of like a mortgage. Awesome. Yeah, it's right. Like, like you're just setting your payment. Mortgaging your electricity. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. Uh, what type of systems do you install more more frequently? Yeah. Um, so uh, our common uh, installations are, uh, you know, so solar panels on the roof, and then there's a few different inverters that we use. So Solar Edge is a is the inverter that you guys uh, installed here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's one of the top manufacturers. Um, we also do Enphase uh, microinverter systems mm. that are uh, good for specialty cases as well, and also a good product. Um, and then our our go-to battery to install is the Tesla Powerwall the Tesla that you batteries, guys installed. Yeah. And and um, from a you know both a customer standpoint and an installer standpoint, it's it's you pretty it's the it's the best battery in my opinion that that you can get and and uh for us to install and maintain and it, it looks great too right right yeah the technology that you know they're coming up with i mean i don't know much you're the expert on this but my husband was so excited he was like we got tesla batteries money. yeah like, yeah so there uh there are only a few providers right here that's, on island that's right that that's carry right. tesla so yeah, yeah, that's right. They're, yeah, they're hard of, to come by. And they're hard we're, to come we're by. We're lucky enough to, to get a relationship with Tesla and right. and, um, and, and install their batteries because they are they're, like I said, they're the, legit. The best ones out, <laughs> they're the best out there. I've I've, I've installed uh, a few different types, and I, I would I would recommend. You wouldn't go them. back. To I would any recommend other. them to to any other customers over the the other batteries out there, right. the other systems out there. Yeah. Um, what is the installation process? How long does it take? 
to install a photovoltaic system in a home? Uh, yeah, so uh, obviously you saw from this weekend, we did yeah. it in three days, yeah. you know, two and a half days. Oh, but it was, but but it was full days. Yes, yes, we, we worked full long days. days, we did. So uh, with the three, three man crew, we did it in like two and a half, to pretty much consider it three days because we worked long days. Right. That's the, that's the easiest part of the install and the quickest part. Unfortunately, right. <laughs> there is permitting and utility oh. approval. And so that's, that can take months sometimes and it's frustrating because- Or a year. Or a year, uh, yeah. Like yeah. us. Yes, yes. Yeah, our permit took a year. Yeah, so um. uh, the, yeah, the, the city and county right now seems to uh, be taking longer with, with permitting. You think? You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a little uh, excessive, right? Uh, right. <laughs> well, you know, and this goes to uh, people that are also wanting to do, um, you know, permitted work or, you know, sometimes they want to build ohanas or just build their own home. Yeah. Uh, the permitting process here in Hawaii does take a while. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm just very grateful that you were able to just... Well, yeah. I mean, we got it in a year, but at least we got the process going and yeah. we got an expert right next to us that was guiding us through the process, right? right. But you guys basically took care of the whole thing. Like yeah. we didn't, you know, which just like we just got the emails of what was going on. Right, the we were like, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because it's like, what you don't do something you don't understand, right? Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I, there's companies that do this and they don't fully understand. And, right. You, know, you right. want to be aware of that because it is a process and, uh, uh, you know, the wrong contractor, if he doesn't know the whole process, right. you know, he can be going through permitting, getting denied, going, trying to go through the, through HECO and getting right. denied and it right. all adds up. It and, all adds and, up. And, you know, uh, it's good to have uh, people that know the process know. And, and know what the utility expects, know what the the, um, the town expects, right? So that we can get it done as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible, yeah. and you know, to speak to your level of service and care, all the questions, you know, they they were answered. Um, you know, if we needed to, you know, re revise whatever, you were available right away. So, like, I, you guys, if you guys do decide with with his company, he's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what is the uh, wear and tear in the roof because yeah yeah what is a typical wear and tear of, of the roof yes so um in reg in regards to the like the work we do um you know being up there does does kind of uh rough up the roof a little bit but once uh and we're making penetrations in the roof properly sealed and with uh uh, metal flashing that goes right under so everything's sealed and flashed as far as like waterproofing and, and stuff like that right um, and then uh, on top of that once your roof is covered with the panels you actually have less wear and tear on the actual roof on the actual after roof. that so let's talk about um, let's talk about different weathers and so yeah. say for example your installation wouldn't be the same in Kona than it would be in Hilo that's right. That's right. So depending on where you live, there's um, things. Uh, there's something called like, an irradiance uh, measurement, where how, however much solar you install, you depending where you live, it takes into account how much sun you get out of the year. Um, you know what latitude or longitude, or sorry, what latitude you're at. Um, so here, between here and Hilo, it's more of a weather thing. Right. So, oh, yeah. So hi there's historical data that will determine if you install, you know, let's say a uh, 10 kilowatt system like you guys did uh, in Hilo, that might uh, produce, you know, let's, and, and don't quote me on this, but <laughs> let's say you produce in Hilo 11,000 kilowatt hours in a year. Mm. Here in Kona, you might do 14,000 kilowatt hours in a year. Yeah. So yeah. over there, you'd have to build a bigger system to cover the electricity needs. Right. Wow, and, and but and also for water or waterproofing the roof, because yeah. you know Hilo gets more rain. Yeah. Do you also forecast for that? 
Um, the, the waterproofing methods we just... use is, is always, it's just going to be based on the type of roof. So yeah. for instance, you have an asphalt shingle roof. Yeah. That's the most straightforward. You, you put an aluminum flashing right up and under the, the next shingle up. So all that water is just going to run over the, the metal, which is covering the hole, right. which also has sealant underneath that. So we're covered for that. And, uh, you know, like I said, for different types of roof, there's, there's always an approved certified like roofer, uh, you know, approved method to, to, to do these do things this. the right way. Which ones are the roofs that are more, um, more difficult? Yeah. Um, Is it like t the tile ones? The tile roofs <laughs> are, are uh, more difficult just because there's more activity to, right. to get your, mount, your mounting point in. You right. know? So we still put a, 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 a different type of flashing. We do lead flashing in that case. And walking on those two, and right? And walking, yeah. We, uh, you got to be I mean, skinny. You gotta be, yeah. No, it's true. We we never put we, we never really put our heavier installers on the roof on, on no. those ones. Um, and even the lightest guys, you get older tiles, different types. Some are just brittle, right. and right. you know it's. Uh, at first, you you like you're afraid to walk on them. You crack them. You feel really bad. And right. Eventually, you kind of realize it's part of it. We recommend that if you do have a tile roof. Hopefully you have some extra tiles because it's going to happen. It, it's inevitable, right. unfortunately. Right, right, right. right. You know? um, and we could always help find replacements. Uh, if, right, you know, or paint it, it, you know, yeah. or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. those those, those uh, tile roofs tiles are, are, right. are really challenging. Yeah. Um, what is the uh, manufacturer warranty on the... T for, for this example, the Tesla batteries? Yeah. But in general, like, what do you think that the, manuf the manufacturer covers yeah. in the event of uh, faulty equipment of yeah. some sorts? Okay, so, yeah, Tesla's... Uh, uh, warranty is for 10 years um, and so it's it's they're pretty good they have monitoring on your system so we hooked it to your Wi-Fi it also has cellular connection and so mm -hmm. Tesla will proactively see alerts if you're if your battery is not operating mm -hmm. how it should be they're gonna they're gonna send you an email saying hey we're seeing that this is not operating to standards we're sending you a replacement uh, yeah, so they're, they're really good about that. It doesn't happen often, but it happens, and uh, it's great that they're, they see it ahead of time. And, wow, and, and they're like your added that. customer service too for you, yeah. because like you're, we're in direct contact with the client, Yes. but it's nice that somebody else is overlooking. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. That and is nice, yeah. I did not know That's, that. Yeah, 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 it's a good benefit. <laughs> So basically, you don't have to monitor your panels because a customer service. Well, the the battery that's Tesla. The panels that that right, is a different battery. system. That's your solar edge uh, inverter. Right. And so we haven't set you up yet, but you'll have a solar edge account as well, mm. and that's where you'll be able to see the twenty four panels up right. on your roof. Right. And you'll see how much each one is doing. Right. Making sure uh, if anything goes wrong, you're going to get an email alert as will uh, oh. Photon Works. And then, yeah, oh. that's, that's how we'll know, okay, there's something to look at. Wow. You know, if you ever get an alert, just give us a call and then we'll, we'll uh, come out and, and replace, like let's say if it was a faulty device or a troubleshoot if needed. Sign me up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love it. And you know what, an, an, another thing that I forgot to mention, um, well, my husband kind of took over this project, mm -hmm. but he wanted the panels in us. So we got two structures, right? Mm -hmm. And so he talked to you about the placement of right. where the where he wanted the panels in the beginning. Right. Do you also troubleshoot that with homeowners that they're like, well, yeah, you, yes. you know, you, you provide your recommendations on where, right, right, but yeah. So like, as far as what would be optimal, what for would be things. optimal, right? Yeah. So. Um, you know, definitely you want to aim for your southern facing roof first because that's going to get the most sun throughout the year. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if, if you need to go elsewhere, you start going to your southeast and southwest roof planes, east or west. Last resort is, is north. But we're in Hawaii. We're, we're at a decent latitude. So even in the wintertime, a northern facing roof, if it's not too steep, it's going to do OK. It's going to do you know? OK. Um, but th like I said, there are optimal roof planes that. But the best is going south. The best the is time. going south, you know. Um, yes. And as the technology is evolving and we're going with battery systems, 
Um, east and west is becoming uh, kind of a solution too because then you're evening out your, your charging and discharging of the battery because oh. in the morning time, you're gonna, you're gonna use that sun, it's gonna charge up the batteries and then you get it going e evened out to the evening whereas the southern facing is kind of, is gonna max in, in the middle of the day and then Ooh. not do as well at the tail at the beginning and the end of the day. Um, so, so it, it's cool. It's a constantly evolving tech, uh, just uh, field, and uh, with now with the batteries becoming so popular and right. really becoming, uh, you know, part of part of a whole system. You know, there's a lot of thought that goes into designing it, right. and thinking about how it's going to work best. You know, uh, when you uh, Derek, Derek was telling me when you did the test of going off, uh, shutting going, off the shutting off Halco. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, my husband said he couldn't even see the when that happened. happened. Yeah. Like if you, you know, I was in, in Waimea earlier and uh, uh, there was a uh, connectivity issue where all the neighborhood just lost power. This was mm. just this afternoon. Oh, oh really? And the, in the home, you know, I was showing it and the home didn't have, you uh, know, lights on. Oh, and, uh, it, and it was a little bit darker. Mm. <laughs> and so that made me think of... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you the it, solar system, right? Yeah, you would have even known that the only way you know there's a power outage is your phone is going to say your system just went off grid, right? But you're not going to see your lights flicker. Yeah, there, there may be a flicker, but that would be it. Your your most of your, your device electronics is stay or on. your right, yeah. your computer. If you didn't save something, can yeah. you imagine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're in sleep mode, and I mean most computers. Yeah. But I mean Mac does it. I don't know about PCs, but you know or. Yeah, I mean, if you were working on something and then yeah, and you uh, lost power, and then you lost so, power, and yeah, in, in most <gasps> oh, cases, no. the the battery is gonna instantly take over. In fact, you're right now. You're you're not even really you're not using Hiko right now. Right, you're, you're running all off your battery power. So when you lose when that Hiko power is cut, there's not really a difference in your house because the power is already being supplied from the battery. Right, right. Yeah, no, that's that's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, what are the uh, advantages on tax credit? Um, that you oh the the tax credits are, are pretty uh, pretty great um, so in, in your case your system uh, was around uh, 50 54 thousand before tax breaks uh, then you get twenty four thousand of that back so you get ten thousand from the state mm -hmm. uh, five thousand per five thousand watt system so you have a ten thousand watt system so you break that into two five thousand watt so you get five thousand for each so total ten and then the federal is a non-capped thirty percent i believe uh they've been playing with that in the last few years so uh so it, it might it might be down to 26 now right but so between that that was fourteen thousand in the state ten giving you twenty four thousand dollar tax credit that you'll basically not you'll it, it, whatever you owe in taxes next year you can get 14,000 back mm -hmm. you know uh, and then if you didn't owe that much in taxes then you can carry yeah, it over the carry next it year over. that's uh, amazing so then you're you're out of pocket for the 10k system and two tesla power walls is around thirty thousand dollars wow um, and the and payback time in that is six years right and years yeah and you're, you're I'm you're excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then there's Sorry, no more. <laughs> well, oh my God, it's like the electricity bills in Hawaii. I mean, they can, and that is, I mean, four to five hundred dollars. But then when you get guests, when you have guests mm. in your home, yeah. then I, we've seen up to like eight hundred dollars yeah, a month. Yeah, yeah, it's you know, so that's it's, yeah, that's it's just crazy. Incredible. Let's talk about leasing your system mm -hmm. and owning your system. Yeah. There's a lot of companies here on the islands that offer uh, a, a lease to own or a straight up lease or mm -hmm. or you own it outright. Yeah, yeah. What will you recommend to those homeowners uh, that are kind of like in between? Uh, yeah, I, I uh, I've, I've been doing solar for uh, since since 2008. So 14 years in the industry, and so I've seen all those leasing companies uh, come out, and they they offer this you know 20 year contract, um, and more recently, uh, what I've seen is customers who have a lease system, 
and they have issues and they can't they can't find the the, the company to fix it. Right. So now they're they're paying their electric bill and you know they're they're they have a faulty heat. photovoltaic. Panel. Yeah. So so now they're just paying heat go again and they're not they're not seen. they're not charged for the electricity that their system's not producing, but they're paying the the heat go rate that they or the electric rate that they were paying in the beginning. Right. So they're not getting you know let's say here in in Hawaii you're thirty eight cents so they might offer you a lease that is the, you pay 20 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm. But if they're not, if the system's not producing, then you gotta get it from the utility again. Right. So, but even if you don't lease your system, you, you might still have issues uh, if you buy it outright. But, uh, you know, you, you can, the other thing with, with the lease system is that you, you're not, technically not allowed to have anyone else touch the system, you know? If, if for, for instance, your system, you know, even if, if we weren't able to come look at it, another certified contractor you could come troubleshoot, uh, he, could, <clears throat> he could service your system. Um, I would not recommend leasing uh, just because after that six year payback time that we've, we've talked about, it's yours, you're not paying any more versus like just having a cheaper rate over a 20 year period. And With an then interest by the rate so Right, right. And then maybe by the <clears> time <throat> it's coming towards the end of that, the company, you know, the company's not, not, not in existence. Yeah, might not be in existence. Right. So it really matters who you get in that. business with. You yeah, know? it really does. I mean, yeah. because if you see a company that just started operating in the next, like in the past two years, yeah. three years, that's kind of sketchy. It could be, you know, yeah, it could be uh, just, you know, it's like I guess, probably any construction contractor. It's like businesses come and go. So right. if you have a company, um, you know, like Photon Works been about around 15 years, you mm -hmm. know, uh, we're, we're local to Hawaii, uh, you know, we're not going anywhere. Right. So right. it, it, it and you're proven so busy. track record is good. Yeah, we're very busy. Your and, commercial, his commercial work is pretty impressive. Mm, yeah. You've done a lot of commercial work. Yeah, we have. Uh, some are more notable. Which one has been like your biggest project? Well, my favorite, which was kind of like my real come to being here uh, in Hawaii and that I'm most proud of was uh, we did almost a megawatt. It was about seven, I believe 700 kilowatts on a Hawaii Pacific University at Aloha Tower Whoa. Marketplace. Wow. So, uh, that was a big that, project That there. one's good, yeah. So we did every single building, pretty much every roof plane there is. How many panels? Uh, I think each phase was about, I want to say 1,200 panels. So 1200 total panels. about... I know, uh, you know, five thousand panels or something oh like that. Oh my gosh! So that wow. that was a lot of that was a lot of fun for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, and and, and uh, we've also done the work with the border water supply um, and a bunch of their storage tanks on Oahu, right. um, and their headquarters. We did some carports there. Uh, so those are some of our big ones that are that are really that are out there. Right, yeah. right, right, right. I mean, and what a peace of mind for a homeowner, right? That, you know, it's installing, like myself, like we installed, you know, just a couple of handful of panels, a right. standard, you know, 15 to 20 panels, right? right. We went, what, 20? 20, 24. 24. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what a peace of mind to be with somebody that you have installed, like, thousands of panels. Right. And, you know, he, you know exactly what you're talking about. Right, right, yeah. Because for a homeowner like us, we're, we're clueless. We're like, oh my gosh, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, see, so yeah, exactly. And and we, we didn't get those projects, we, you know, kind of luckily. It's right. Like, you know, yeah, you work hard we've, for them. We've worked with, uh, you know, government. We've worked with several investors that keep coming back to us because of uh, the quality and the value and that we provide. your track record, too. Yeah. Right, 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 yeah. right. That's amazing. What's your experience with working with the county and yeah. working with, with getting those panels permitted? Yeah, so uh, there's different scenarios can make, make it harder or easier. Uh, some, some houses, you can actually get a permit online simply by filling out an online form saying, I'm putting solar and a battery this size and you'll get it and you have it instantly. The projects that maybe might be in a flood zone um, mm. or have some sort of special, you know, zoning or a townhouse, uh, you know, 
these types of property or certain type of properties that you can't do an online permit. Mm. So now everything has to be over the counter. And these are the projects that are taking months to months and months to, to get approved. Get. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. So it, the, the, it's, you know, kind of uh, the, the difference that you can get one instantly and another one is taking, you know, almost like a year in some cases. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, something can be tweaked, it seems, to, <laughs> to like kind of make it a little bit easier, right. especially for something that's such a, uh, you know, a benefit to, to the customer and to... You know, the, the community, island, the, the, the islands, and, you, know, uh, you know, the world, really. Right. I wish the county officials were taking more <laughs> of this into account and make it, making it a little bit easier. Yeah. Because yeah. in our case, was, you know, close to a year. And so, you know, it's just something that you just got to ha- forecast that, yeah. you know, so he, it goes to also, if you're, if you purchase property here in Hawaii and... Um, you move in, you know, next 45 days, right? You close on your home, mm-hmm. and then you want to get photovoltaic system immediately. You cannot. That's yeah. like magic. Like, it doesn't exist, yeah. right? You have to go through the permitting process. They have to go and assess, you know, your roof. You can certainly, you know, get an estimate uh, while you're under contract. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you it's... have to wait for that permitting to go through. Right. And... Um, yeah. So it's not instant. Yeah, yeah. It's, right. uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely a process, um, unfo- yeah, unfortunately. So what will you recommend to people that are operating off-grid? So, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, people that are moving from the mainland that are, you know, in remote areas, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. They want to do it themselves. They probably, um, they want, for one, they just want to do it themselves, right? Yeah. They're the hardcore DIYers, yeah, yeah. or the funds are not there. What will you recommend to people that are uh, wanting to install their system themselves? Once? Yeah. Um, well, you know, for, uh, first I would say, uh, you know, you want to definitely have a, a, at least a qualified electrician to somewhat supervise or look over your work. Um, uh, as far as being off grid and and uh, not even having utility connection, the, the Tesla Powerwall system can can work just like that. You know, right. we, like right. I said, we cut your breaker. We can leave it off for you know for the whole year. You might lose power at, at points because you don't have sun for let's say if right. it, the weather's not great for a few days. There's just not the energy there. Right. Um, but it can operate off grid. You just deal with, you know, any off grid system is going to deal with this type of issues. Uh, some people that we've done a few off grid jobs, um, and you can you can do a, a generator that will automatically kick in if the battery does ever get too low. Mm. So there there's systems that can be off grid, and you still have emergency power in case in you case the it. sun's out. You know, in the winter time it happens. We the, the off grid sites we have. Uh, you know, in the winter, we might have a week where we right. don't get, unfortunately, I know, like, you know, of the, the whole year, we might get a week where we, we get cloudy days, right? Right, you know, back right, to right. back. And that's the time that the site's generator will kick on right. um, to, to sustain the loads of the, the so, site. So you can even help out the people that are tr- wanting to do it, you know, like off grid. Yeah. You know, but in the event that they, that they don't have access to and that they just want to go out on their own, um, you know, there are ways to do it, but just to have a certified electrician at least, yeah. at least at the minimum, yeah, please. Yeah. No fires, guys. <laughs> yeah, we definitely want to be careful. <laughs> we don't want, right? So just be careful out there. So um, we, as promised, we have, uh, I was able to gather uh, a couple of questions from the group. Uh, the group is called I'm Moving to the Big Island of Hawaii and Facebook. You're able to find us there. So Brie Martino, is asking how to how to do the math to see how big of a system do you need? Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, the a site that I would recommend to size your system is a site. Uh, I believe it's called PV Watts. Um, this will allow you to put in a size system, and it'll spit out the kilowatt hours that mm. that system would produce in a year based on your location 
Um, and like we talked about earlier with the irradiance maps, your location has weather data, historical data. So that site has in, built into the calculator how much energy would be produced per kilowatt. Uh, now to know how much kilowatt hours you need in a year, you're gonna look at your electricity bill um, and right, you get charged per kilowatt hour, that number is gonna be on your mm -hmm. electricity bill. So you take that number from you know each month, add them all up for the year. Right. And then you can uh, design the system that way to, to cover that kilowatt hour um, amount. That's golden advice, guys. It's coming from a pro. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, yeah, I've been, I've been doing it for a long, long time now. <laughs> so what are your, uh, he's also asking, what are your safety tips for hooking up the system? Uh, for example, how do you hook up a charge controller or inverter? Mm, so the, the systems we do um, are, don't use a charge controller. We use a, a grid-tied inverter. Uh, so, uh, of course, installed to code and, and hooking up an inverter is similar to hooking up an appliance. Uh, so on the AC side, you're going to have a breaker that ties in uh, at your main panel after passing through safety switches and disconnects. Uh, and then from the roof side, your uh, solar panels will be strung according to a design and they're going to come down to the inverter and the inverter is going to take that solar energy and, and convert it to your house electricity feeding through that connection point, which is uh, a breaker or um, Tesla gateway in your right, case. Right, right. That's, well, thank you so, so much for answering that for, yeah. for, for this uh, group member. We have, another, we have uh, two more questions from another member, Kager Schrimscher. <laughs> Kager? Scrimscher. Scrimscher. Yeah. <laughs> How to connect a solar system to a main breaker panel? Yeah, yeah. So uh, basically, like I said, you, you can uh, install an appropriate size breaker for your uh, PV system or your PV inverter. So in your case, you have a six, uh, 10 kilowatt inverter that, that uses a 60 amp breaker. So uh, after passing again through uh, required safety switches, you're going to go, you can install in your main breaker panel a 60 amp breaker. Um, of course, again, following code rules and NEC requirements to, to make sure you're, you're going to be code compliant and not, not do anything dangerous and get approved uh, by your local inspector. Right. And, and, and she's, he's also asking how to properly ground your system. Uh, how to properly ground your system. Uh, so the grounding is done, again, to, according to NEC code. Um, you're going to have... Uh, a minimum number eight uh, copper that has to come and hit all of your metal components of your system on the roof and come all the way through your you know, through the system and and land in your at your main service um, panel and tie in with your existing grounding electrode system. Wonderful. Thank you so so much for yes, yes. answering all these solar questions. Uh, for uh, contacting Steve, I'm going to be linking all his information down below and uh, you can get a hold of him directly. Photon Works. Photon Works rocks. Engineering. Yes. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so, so much, much Steve. Yes, yes, he's, got a, he's, he's catching a flight right this minute. Going back to Honolulu. <laughs> going back to Honolulu. But if you do need to get a hold of his company, I'm going to be linking all his information uh, down below. It was a pleasure talking all to right. you. Thanks so much, Mom. Uh, it was so great. It was fun. I know. Uh, <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.